Hello, everyone. I'm Becca, dietitian by trade, mom 24-7, wife from the start, and when there's a few extra hours in the day, you might find me hitting the trails or on horseback. And I'm Kara, a therapist to women, a mom to a boy, an entrepreneur, mountain junkie, and a postpartum runner. And this is Fit for a Queen, a podcast that's devoted to the female athlete wanting to balance the teeter-totter of all the things we desire out of life as women. Performance, health, intellect, and taking time for self, even if we only get one minute out of the day. We're so excited to be bringing you the queens in the athletic world who have done just that. Okay, ladies, take a seat at your thrones, grab your crowns, and welcome to fit for a queen. Well, welcome back, queens. Today, we have Luke Holt of Fellowship of Christian Athletes. So first, let's share a little bit about the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Their vision is to see the world transformed by Jesus Christ through the influence of coaches and the athletes. Its mission is to lead every coach and athlete into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ and his church. Since 1954, Fellowship of Christian Athletes has challenged coaches and athletes to impact the world for Jesus Christ. FCA, also known as Fellowship of Christian Athletes, is cultivating Christian principles in local communities nationwide by encouraging, equipping, and empowering others to serve as examples and to make a difference. Reaching approximately 2 million people annually on the professional college, high school, junior high, and youth levels, FCA focuses its ministry efforts on building relationship with coaches and athletes in order that they might trust Jesus, honor God in their lives, and help others do the same ultimately becoming a full circle follower of Jesus Christ. FCA reaches coaches and athletes through huddles, events, training, and resources. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, we, I've been involved with FCA since I was young and in school and uh, got to play some baseball in college and stay connected and then came back and became a coach. And, and one of the biggest reasons that I went to education and coaching was because uh, my coach loved me and cared for me and was a really, really awesome male presence in my life at a time when I really needed one. So it was it was powerful. And it's one of the reasons that I wanted to go and coach. I, I know that coaches have a great impact. And so it fuels my passion for getting to be on mission with FCA as we coach coaches to lead their athletes and the difference that it makes in our world today. And so we've been in Kansas City for about 10 months. I grew up in Southern Illinois. God called us to Kansas City. And it's been a whirlwind, but it's been amazing uh, for my family and I as we see God really do amazing things here in the in the metro Kansas City area. And couldn't be more excited for what he's done and really looking forward to the days to come. Nice. Love it. Can you tell us a little bit more about um, FCA's mission and sort of vision? Yeah. For sure. Uh, well, you know, the, at the center of it all, we believe Jesus Christ is the one who transforms. And so our vision is right there that that we want to see the world transformed by Jesus, not by FCA, by Jesus. We're just we're just uh, being used by God uh, in the sports community to see great things happen. And so we we want to focus in and key in on the coach because we do believe that they are the greatest influencer uh, in especially in the sports world, but maybe even in the world. Um, today uh, to athletes and to all those that athletes influence. And so we really key in on that greatest influencer, the coach. We build relationships with them in hopes that uh, they would see this gospel of Jesus Christ and that they would accept the gospel and they would they live a transformed life from that. It would affect everything they do. And that is really like our end game. We want to see coaches transformed because we know that a transformed coach will uh, will allow opportunities for his or her athletes to be transformed as well. And it's just, it's kind of the way that we, not kind of, it is the way that we do things. And uh, we're so excited about that as our, as our mission is to lead every coach and athlete, every single one of them. And there's a lot of coaches and athletes in our world today. And so we're building strategies to lead every single one of them into a growing relationship with Jesus and his church. Uh, we're just a, we want to partner with churches. We're not, here to compete against the local church. We love the local church. Uh, we're a parachurch ministry, and we want to complete uh, the ministry, especially when it comes to coaches and athletes. We'll come alongside churches and help them lead all those that are in the sports realm into a growing relationship with Christ. And 
that is uh, that is our focus. That's what we do. That's uh, what we love. And if you hear it from other staffers, you'll hear the same thing. There's over 1,800 staff with SCA now. And wow. if you're asking the same question, I would think that you would hear the same response. And it's something I wake up excited about every day. Mm-hmm. I love. I just came back from a conference, and there was so much discussion about coaches, coaches' role. Mm-hmm. Um, it, specifically, it was female athletes, so about having more women in coaching. But I think for the longest time, it was coaches just teach you how to do the game, and they're now understanding like they have a really powerful role mm-hmm. in the culture of that particular team, the culture of that sport. So they could really turn that and use it positively and teach somebody about Christ and how to be a good model as a Christian, even in their sport. No question. Uh, we would say the two most powerful words in the English language right now are coach says. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> I'm yeah. learning it real life right now. My son is seven. He's playing baseball and I've played college. I mean, I, I know how to hit and I'm <laughs> my son and, and he's a, and his coach is a volunteer. Great guy. I really like him a lot. And he's like, well, dad, coach, coach says this. this. (laughs) You're right. (laughs) But I think if you ask people, especially who are in sports like you yourself, that who has influence on your life, coach tends Mm -hmm. to be on those lists for sure. They do have a lot of influence for the good and the bad. Yeah. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's you. You guys are so right. I mean, I, I believe every single coach will have influence. Now that influence could be great and it could be, uh, a bad influence, but there very seldom will you find oh, the coach really didn't have an impact on me. Yeah. Uh, it, there was some sort of impact. And so we obviously, I mean, we want to build relationships with coaches to help them see the impact that they have. Uh, too many coaches are, are becoming a slave to the scoreboard and they mm-hmm. probably feel like they have to mm-hmm. uh, because the culture we live in and we just really want to help them see there's a bigger picture out here, especially the ones that have a, already have a relationship, uh, have a faith. I mean, we're called to be an ambassador for Christ. And so that does not separate um, when we walk onto the field, the mat, the court, the track. Uh, it, it's a part of who we are, and it should, it should affect the way that we lead our teams. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I saw that uh, post not too long ago where it talked about how Coach K – um, changed his coaching style after watching his wife with the players oh, really? that she would get to know him on a little bit more personal level. Uh-huh. And he felt like she had a better relationship with the players than he <laughs> right. did. And so it made him think like, I need to get down to you know their level as an even peer and learn how to communicate and form relationships. So it sounds like that's exactly what you're instilling for your, your coaches. And I think that's definitely something that's changing in the court the coach field too of versus like a power Mm -hmm. kind of struggle. Yeah. Yeah. You know, ladies are exactly right. That we, you know, in the world you see it so often that a lot of what the world wants us to do is build ourselves into a legend and forget about the fact that we have an opportunity to leave a legacy. And so that's, that's one of the things that we'll say, Hey coach, you want to be a legend or leave a legacy. And it's about relationships. And that's what this is all about. It's about at the end of the day, do you want a uh, trophy case just absolutely full, fully decorated with all the championships, you know, everything that you've ever won? Or do you want those athletes still come back to you? Hey, coach, I got married. Hey, coach, we had our Mm -hmm. first child. Hey, coach, I'm a grandpa (laughs) in some case. You know, I mean, just it goes on forever and ever and ever. And then it, it carries on. It's that. You know, it's that discipleship, disciple making mindset where it's an exponential growth of believers and believers and hearts being transformed, even just through one coach. You see generations and generations and generations of athletes that have been deeply impacted. And it's not because they helped that athlete win a championship or get a college scholarship. It's because they loved that athlete. Absolutely. Well, tell us a little bit more about the resources for athletes, especially being new to the Kansas City, what you have to offer them here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would I'll always say that our greatest resource is a relationship, <laughs> going back to the whole relationship piece. It's why we focus a lot on having staff or staff led volunteers in place to build relationship and connect with coaches and athletes in our areas. And that's really one of my jobs is to really focus on that, to helping build a, a team, an army, really, that will will be there. Um, not to just run programs, but to just be there relationally, to be the life-giving 
source and not the life taking. We never want to be going to coaches and athletes say, hey, will you go do this for us? We want to be there and help them in their ministry field that's already there. And so the relationship is the key. Now, through those relationships, we have groups. We call we call them huddles. And we could have coaches huddles where it's a group of coaches coming together. We could have a huddle on campus where it's, it's student-led ministry going on that a coach has signed up to to be the huddle coach and, and allow that to be a part of it. And then the big difference maker is when you have a coach that believes so much in this that they have seen their specific team, say the volleyball coach, she sees her team as the ministry field. And so they have a team huddle where it's even more relational because they're on the bus together. They're in off season workouts together, in the weight room together. They're in uh, practices together, games together, all that it's year long. It happens time and time again. And so we make sure resource them, have everything they need. We set them up with a great structure to see that happen. Um, those are those are some key pieces there. We also have a, a great camp ministry globally. In the Kansas City area, we have three camps available this summer and a fourth in Pell, Iowa that several Kansas City athletes will go to. And so we, we create those opportunities as well. And so it's it's there's several opportunities out there it's just a matter of people knowing about them and having the chance to connect. Well, we'll be sure to put those um, in our show notes as well so they can find it. But um, I also noticed you guys seem to have even um, some technological um, support they can get like apps. Is that correct? Devotionals? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we sure do. If you just read the, I think almost everybody today has that U version Bible app. It seems like a lot of people have the, you version of Bible app. And if you would type FCA in there, there's several, there's several, and that just keeps growing. And there's, there's several for coaches. There's several for athletes um, from a just hard copy. FCA has a ton of resources, even things for like coaches, spouses, uh, which is a really hard place to be mm. uh, for a lot of coaches. Spouses. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yep. And when, and when you think about that, you always think about a female, but there's also, I mean, for all oh, the yeah. female coaches, we mm-hmm. want to reach every female coach. We have, <laughs> We have a team um, here of females that we just love to pour into as they pour into more leaders. And because we see that we cannot miss there. And so we try to get really specific. We try to be right there and it makes sense. It's practical and it really speaks to the person we're trying to reach in in the life that they're in. And so nobody knows what a coach's wife is going through unless you're a coach's wife. I mean, that's, there's no doubt about it. And so we, we have resources for that even. And so the, the resources are out, out the, you know, we have so many resources. So we cannot miss on again, that greatest resource though, which is the relationship because that Mm -hmm. supersedes it all. It's the relationship that, that allows for the coach's Bible to come to play or the U version, uh, all the different studies on there. It's, it's going to happen because of the relationship that we're building. How do you feel like an athlete can tie their faith into performance? Hmm. Well, you know, I don't think we can, I don't think if you're truly following Christ uh, that you should separate them um, or that you really can separate them. Mm -hmm. However, uh, we do. Uh, We often do, unfortunately. And so we really want to help coaches and athletes see that, that their, their life in Christ, their faith is directly tied to the way that they compete. Um, I would say for myself, there were many years that my identity was in the how well I did that day. Let's say I had a mm-hmm. double header and I was over ten. Boy, I felt like I was the worst player in the team, and it didn't it didn't lead well into the next day. Uh, and the days that I played and had the confidence to play that my identity was in the Lord, and He wasn't any more glorified in a nine for ten day than an zero for ten day. Uh, he loves me for who I am, and I can give my perfect effort to him because he's the one who's created it, it freed me up. Mm-hmm. And you know, as an athlete, when you play free, it changes everything. Mm-hmm. And so I do believe it is tied to performance. However, I also believe we have to be careful to say, hey, listen, if you're a Christian, then you're gonna you're gonna run faster, you're gonna be stronger, <laughs> yeah. you're gonna win right. more games. Right. But the real the reality is that you will play more free. Right. And your, your ability level does not decrease. Uh, I believe that Jesus was the greatest competitor of all time because I believe that he looked the enemy in the eye and said, I'm never losing to you because yep. I care about my will, the will of my father. And I care about these people way too much to ever lose to you. 
And so if we who have that competitive, that Christ like competitive within us will raise that for his glory, uh, it changes everything. It changes everything. If we believe that in our competition, we are seen as uh, through the image of Christ, it changes. It changes the way that we compete. It changes the way that we see our opponents. It changes the way that we handle adversity. It changes the way that we handle loss. It changes everything. It doesn't mean that we aren't going to try to win, but it's redefining what success is. The success, the win for us is that God is glorified in and through the way that we compete. And then, and then, um, if, if it works out, the wins on the scoreboard come, but, um, I'm telling you, when you compete freely in Christ, it changes everything and it doesn't decrease your potential. I can promise you that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that. Cause I think so many athletes for our, our younger athletes get turned to as idols and it's okay for oh, them yeah. to model like Steph Curry. I mean, I think oh, he yeah. talks openly and, um, Tim Tebow, but we have to be cautious. Like you said that you're not, Oh, if I believe in God and because Steph mm-hmm. Curry believes in God, I'll be like him. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, I think there is like the kids really do kind of connect that. So yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm powerful messages yeah i um i really you guys are hitting it right on the head i mean we we live in a culture where our sports communities become idol worship if you go out to a baseball diamond on the weekends you'll see that the parents are worshiping the success of their kids everything hinges on that and when we let our hope rest on that i mean listen people are gonna fail people like that will always fail us Mm -hmm. and and hearing the affirmation from you guys I, i would I hope that you would agree that the only thing that will never fail us is putting our hope in Jesus Christ. It's, oh. it's never going to fail us. And so, again, when we put our hope and everything into wins and losses or performance, uh, then when that fails, how do we respond? Mm-hmm. Um, most of the time, negatively. Uh, we, we, our self-worth uh, shrinks, um, the ability to just... Uh, encourage and lead others diminishes a lot of things happen there as opposed to putting your hope in the only one that is worthy of our hope and letting that play out in the way that we compete uh, it's like i said and i said before it's a it's a game changer it's it's just absolutely um transformational transform transforms our hearts in the way that we see competition Absolutely. You're right. Because as long as you say, hey, how was my performance today, God? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. <laughs> he'll give you the honest <laughs> feedback. <laughs> when you feel that punch in the gut, that probably means that you weren't the, the best competitor. You may have not had the most sportsmanship. <laughs> uh-huh. Something yeah, else to look and at. and yeah. there's immediate, and it's a great model. Uh, it's a great way to model uh, forgiveness, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, because yeah. as soon as I. I mean, what I've learned is as soon as I, I'm not, the only way I compete anymore, ladies, is on the golf course. So, you know, (laughs) if I get really frustrated and I would do things, I I was such a mad uh, player until Mm -hmm. a few years ago when this really came through in my heart, just the way I represent myself and in the calming nature and still wanting to compete and still wanting to play well, but the way you respond to it. And so if you do mess up, here's the reality you turn right to the Lord and you say, Lord, forgive me and turn from that. And you, you model a forgiveness and a, and a confession and repentance there, right there in the middle of competition. And, and you're forgiven. I mean, it's a promise from his word. You're forgiven. You can move on to it instead of living with that for days and weeks and months. Uh, like we often do. I mean, the enemy wants us to live with right. that, to wear that, to be shameful and have the guilt in that. And that's just not who Jesus is. And so we shouldn't be that way in competition either. Well, Luke, thanks so much for being on, and we're so glad that now we have some local resources for our athletes here in the Kansas City area. We're glad you're here. Oh, I'm excited. We're, we're just at the beginning and uh, really excited for what you guys are doing, and especially with the, with the <laughs> female with female athletes. I just God uh, put something special uh, when he created women, and we're so excited about what they bring to the table. They're a huge part of our ministry, and we see so much love and compassion from women in our ministry. And it really sets the tone for a lot of men to see what relationships and genuine love, (laughs) unconditional love should look like. And so I'm so thankful that you guys would have me on and I just ask you to keep on 
because uh, that's what we're called to do. Yeah. Well, we couldn't agree more on that. <laughs> Luke, Wait, at, yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah. At the end of each interview, you, we like to ask our interviewees how they live out the fit philosophy. Um, being so busy and doing a lot of things here, how do you balance performance, health, intellect, <coughs> and taking time for self? So how do you balance it all out there? Yeah. Um, I, I, I spend some time every morning uh, just really, really – spending time with the Lord uh, and growing in my wisdom and him and spending time with my kids, loving them as well before I get going each day. And that is, if I miss that, uh, then, then my day seems a little off. Mm -hmm. And so I try to bring that into play. Most of my days having some intentional time to grow and know our Lord and spend time in prayer, some worship and just, reflecting on what all he has done for me and the value um, that he sees me at and then and, and that changes everything and so um, that's how I would have to answer that in this in this moment in this season of my life and I've needed it I've needed it because in 10 months there's been a lot of scary moments of what did we do we moved our family <laughs> what are we doing? Over here. oh uh, yeah I that. <laughs> we know that we the know sky that is tall. falling <laughs> and so yeah yeah my family has handled it much better than I say I would have. They've they've done awesome, and so I'm I'm so proud of what God's done through my wife and her leadership and and our kids as well. So it's it's really been great. Thanks for asking. That's a, that's a good challenging question to ask most <laughs> anybody you guys come in with. And that's why we came up with the theme of our podcast to be that because it's so hard to balance. And you you're right. You got to have your foundation set because if mm -hmm. you don't then you're always grasping at straws. And we hope that um, if any athletes hear this, that uh -huh. they can reach out and use these resources. And I encourage, you know, I was on the fence for years about coaching. And the last three years I coached my daughter's team. And the part that was so cool for me wasn't so much the wins, but like when I would go to school functions and you'd be like, Coach Becca, and they would <laughs> run up and just hold on to you and smile or they tell you about something like, you forget that even in parks and rec ball that you are going to be a part of their life and bring a smile to their face and vice versa, even as a coach. Like I, I love that on the, the worst days when I'd show up for practice, the little smiling faces would, would get you through it. Mm -hmm. So that, Coach Becca, that just that just again affirms I need that affirmation every day. I mean you you're hitting it right where it needs to be. And so it's that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. That makes me <laughs> excited. Well, Luke, you have a great rest of your day, and we look forward to hearing more about what the FCA is up to. And uh, welcome to Kansas City. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies. I appreciate everything. All right. We'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye, Queens. Yep. Today's episode is brought to you by Yours Truly. I'm excited to announce the releasing of my book, Finding Your Sweet Spot in Sport, Avoiding Relative Energy Deficit in Sport, also known as Red S, by optimizing your energy balance. Be sure to follow me on social media or go to my website, www.beccamacomble.com, to find out when the release date is set and when it'll be on Amazon. Bye, queens. For additional information on today's topic and guests, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Fit for a Queen. And Hashtag Fit for a Queen. And don't forget to rate us on iTunes. We can't wait for you to join us next time on Fit for a Queen. Bye, Queens.